How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. Today, I am doing the long awaited video. For years, y'all have asked me to do a live comparison of the RV-10 and the Sling TSI. These are two of the best four-seater airplanes in the market today. And in this video, we're gonna do an in-depth review of each airplane and compare the pros and cons of either flying one of those or flying one of these. Stay tuned. No kidding, guys. So today I have the RV-10 and the Sling TSI side by side. And honestly, the reason I'm doing this video is one, it's been highly requested, but I also know that anyone who's looking at an RV-10 is also looking at a Sling TSI. So the first factor we'll dial into is the look and design of each airplane. You have the RV-10, which basically is a staple name and also a staple design. And I'm gonna get closer to it. So each airplane, both the RV and the Sling TSI has these really cool two doors in the front. But what you notice with the RV-10 is that you have a much wider entry uh, space as compared to the Sling TSI. But also the design of this airplane, in my opinion, looks very similar to some of the other airplanes in the same class. Uh, this looks similar to the Lancer, also even the Cirrus SR-20 or 22 but it's something, it's basically a well-known design. And what I'll say is if it's not broken, don't fix it. Uh, but this one here, uh, this particular RV-10, as you see, is in a nice white and blue paint. And we covered this particular model years ago on the channel. And the owner was kind enough to let me check it out again today. But design-wise, I would say the RV-10 looks sweet. And it's also taller. So if I go back to the Sling TSI or go back up front here, you will see that the RV-10 stands taller than the Sling TSI. But I think it's a very clean sheet. It's a very neat design. My only qualms with the design and look and finish of this RV-10 is that it looks like other airplanes in the same category. Now we move over to the Sling TSI and I'll be very frank with you my opinion here is very biased clearly i fly this airplane and i personally like the looks and finish of the sling tsi better one of the reasons i like this design better is because it looks a little sleeker although it's gonna pay for that in the cabin space when we get to that in a little bit but it looks lower and a little sleeker just more sporty looking uh in my opinion than the RV-10. So when it comes to looks and finish, I personally like this better, but you might like that one better. And with this video, I'm actually not giving one over the other. I actually want you guys to choose which you think is the better airplane. But again, you can't go wrong really if you go with the Sling TSI or the RV-10. Some details to look at, for example, you look at the wings of this airplane. Now the RV-10 has shorter wings than the Sling TSI. And the TSI has a more, what's the word I'm looking for? It's flatter. So the initial Sling 4 wing design was a bit fatter than this. And so they had to kind of pan it together to get some extra speed from it. I just like the looks better and has a nice little winglet here. Now you look at the RV-10, these are standard wings and you probably even find these wings on other uh, RV models, but it served the airplane well. So, and that's why they've kept it. So things like that when it comes to looks and finish, I like the one on this better. And then as I mentioned, the downsides of the Sling TSI though, is look at how much space you have to get in and out of the airplane. With the RV-10, I think the RV is the more practical airplane when it comes to that. But in terms of just the looks and finish, it's hard to see anything else that looks like a Sling TSI whenever you're at the airport. Now let's talk about specs. This is one of the most important thing that you're going to consider when you're looking at the RV or the Sling. Let's start with the RV. With this airplane, you have a much bigger engine, Lycoming 260 horsepower engine. And you can see also how just much broader the nose of this airplane is as compared to the Sling TSI. So you have almost double the power in a RV-10 than you do in a Sling TSI. The power plant in that is only 145 horsepower, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that you get 
ex you know significantly more performance out of either airplane so the 260 horsepower in this airplane you're looking at 10 to 14 gallons of fuel burn per hour depending on your speed but your climb rate if you're just the only person flying the airplane you're looking at 1600 feet per minute which is to me impressive and then once you get in cruise you can lean this airplane and cruise at 160 knots true and with that you're only burning 10 gallons of fuel per hour now let's move over and see what we got here and you guys have seen me fly this plane several times with this again you have a much smaller engine you can see again the the nose here not too big right and with 145 horsepower you're gonna climb if it's just you you can climb up to 2,000 feet a minute but I generally fly this thing I'm climbing between 1,200 and 1,500 feet a minute if it's just me now once I get in cruise you're gonna I usually plan for 150 knots true and with that I usually burn between 7.1 to 7.3 gallons of fuel per hour. Now more specs, we know that each airplane has four seats, okay? Four seats here and four seats there. And both airplanes are true four-seater airplanes. Now you can nickel and dime your fuel and people that you want to carry. The useful load in the RV-10 is 1,100 pounds. And so however you want to DV that up, uh, the gas tank though your capacity in this airplane is 60 gallons total so you're looking at about 360 pounds that you have to shave off if you have a full tank and then whatever is left is then you can fit people in with the sling TSI now depending on the first or second generation this is the first generation this airplane has a little over a thousand pounds of useful load so you're at a thousand twelve pounds and the version one which is this airplane only has about 44 45 gallons of fuel and with that you're shaving about 270 pounds off when you fill up the tanks so again your useful loads are uh, comparable there but honestly when you fill up your tanks or when you calculate your payload it really will depend on also how many or how much equipment you have in each plane i would consider this rv10 fully loaded and i'll show you actually some of the avionics we've got in here so if you just pack up a lot of stuff in your airplane you have to consider the weight that you're also taking away from your useful load. so you can see here avionics wise which i'll talk about in a little bit this airplane is fully loaded as far as avionics same thing with the sling tsi now what you do have that's a little bit more extra in the sling TSI is you've got a parachute. So you've got to divvy out some weight off of that. And so now you're looking at less useful load in the sling TSI than you have in the RV-10. Another comparable specs in the RV and the sling are the prop. So both these airplanes have a constant speed propeller. Now this is two bladed and the sling TSI has three. It's a three blader prop and it's also a constant speed but here's one thing you would get in a sling tsi that you wouldn't get in an rv and that is this prop is electronically controlled and also you have pretty much automation with the engine and the prop so you have a fadec engine uh, there's no mixture uh, lever in the airplane all of that is done for you by computer now with an rv10 it's a more conventional airplane and I'll show you some of that stuff once we get uh, in the interior. Also, when it comes to the range, with those 60 gallons of fuel, depending on how you fly the airplane, this airplane can take you up to 950 nautical miles, while the Sling TSI will take you up to 800 nautical miles. So you've got more range in the RV-10 than you do in the Sling TSI, although you will be burning less fuel in this plane and again depending on how you f or how fast you fly either airplane you can get more or less range now let's talk about practicality when you buy or own one of these planes how is it when you have to spend day and night with these planes and that has to do with just comfort getting in and out how easy it is to step in the airplane, step out, your luggage compartment, all those things. So I wanna cover that here. I'm in front of the Sling TSI. We've already established that this has 
a limitation when it comes to the door opening but then also if you look at the cut for the luggage compartment here it's nice and open but you still have just about that much space so for example i couldn't fit my you guys may have seen me fly with one of my green uh, medium sized luggage I can just fit that directly in here so that's what you get with the sling TSI and then also the amount of the max load you can put in this luggage compartment is 77 pounds now let's check out the RV 10 this is a bigger plane even though the specs are very similar and they cost just about the same to build out you can see how much bigger the door luggage door for this airplane is and this also you can put about a hundred pounds of luggage back here so so you see the space here and then as I said getting in and out which we're gonna check out right now I'm gonna ask my buddy Bill to get in the airplane for me so just to show you what it takes to get in an RV 10 this is how you'd get in let's see how easy or hard it is so you step up boom and you are in that's how you get an rv10 now let's try that in the sling tsi because i want to cover all these little minute details so you know what it's like to live with each airplane so now let's come to the sling tsi and i'm gonna ask bill to also get in this airplane very similar how you get in the rv10 but let's see how comfortable or harder it is just you step over the seat same way you sit on top of the the seat there you yeah, see and bill is on the taller side and then you get in so how would you say was it easier or, or a little bit more more tasking to get in this one just a little bit harder but not significantly once you get used to it i'm sure okay the rv10 has a center bar that is really easy to grip onto when getting in Gotcha. So I was looking for that at first because oh, no, this is my no. first time in a sling. Okay, so that just you know that that may have caused some of it. Okay, so there you go. So again, practicality to get in and out of the airplane, it does take some getting used to whichever airplane you decide to to buy or fly. But you see, getting in and out, it does take you know a little bit of finesse there. So you have that now. I want to cover the back seat because whenever we've checked out the RV10 in the past, I've sat in it with you guys and I've shown you just how much roomy that cabin is. And speaking of being roomy, again, this is a taller airplane and what you have is you have about three inches wider in the RV10 and just a tidbit taller also on in the cabin space now that doesn't mean that the sling tsi will not take a sizable person the tallest person that i know who flies or who's building one of these i think it's six five or six six and i knew a fella uh, in california who finished this plane he's about six four so even if you're on the taller side you can still fly that comfortably but you do have a tidbit more room in this cabin than you do in the sling tsi okay now speaking of before i step inside here's another thing that comes to mind when it comes to getting in and out of the airplane you see where it says no step on the rv10 so basically to step in this airplane you have to go from the step up and then you have to kind of spread your legs forward and now climb on top of this whereas in the sling or on the sling tsi you can just step over you can go directly from the step up and just step right in but because the flaps on the rv10 extends all the way to the fuselage you have to step over it so that's another thing to keep in mind in terms of easy in and out but speaking of let's get in that back seat and i'll show you how easy it is for me to step in and sit so i'm going to climb on now stepping up over now here's the thing you see because of the wider door here with the rv10 i'm just stepping in literally just stepping in and i'm just scooting myself down in the back so guys here i am in the back seat of the rv10 very spacious and Again, I wanted to key in on how easy it is to get in and out. So getting in, it's actually easier to get in the back seat of this airplane than get in the front seat because again, once you're up there, 
you just step in. You step in and you scoot back. Now, I haven't taken a long ride in this airplane as I did in the Sling TSI, so I can't really give you, uh, I can't really compare it, but I can tell you that it is comf uh, comfortable and spacious back here. Now, let's try the Sling TSI, and I'm gonna ask Bill to do the honors and get in the back seat for me. All right, now here we are in the Sling TSI, and I'm gonna ask Bill to get in to the back seat this time. All right, so it's gonna climb in just normally, and we'll see how that is for him. A little bit of a big step on the second leg. Okay. And uh, yeah. A little, little <laughs> so again, if you are on the taller side, uh, it might be more slopey back there. Um, as you can see, he's literally bending his head in the back seat. That's another thing you have to consider. Whereas when you in the RV, or have you sat in the back seat and-, and Plenty of headroom. Okay. So again, taller airplane, this looks, it's like a little sports car. So something to consider if you're on the taller side, uh, you may not have uh, some, some lenient room up there, but that's, that's good to know. See, I didn't even know this until, <laughs> all right, there we go. I got surprised. Now he's going to come back out. So again, when it comes to everyday use and being practical, uh, these are some of the things you have to consider. Now that said, I want you to realize that no matter how much you plan to fly with friends and family, in my experience, when you buy an airplane or you own your own airplane, it's just you most of the time. So if you don't really have anyone taller that you want to put in the back seat, then maybe that's not an issue. But if you have taller friends and families or people that you, you want to carry around, then you want to consider that in the sling as compared to the RV. So cabin space, this airplane definitely has ways ahead in terms of height and width of the cab. Okay guys, now let's talk performance. Whether you're flying this for business or leisure, your performance is key. We mentioned that the RV-10 has a pretty big engine, almost double the size of this in terms of horsepower. But this is also a lighter airplane. So, for example, the Sling TSI only weighs about 2,084 pounds gross. That's all of it. Whereas the RV-10 weighs 2,700 pounds. So this plane has a good 600 pounds over the Sling TSI. So that actually makes this more... Uh, I don't want to say more efficient, but you don't need as big of an engine to power and move this airplane as you do to power and move an RV-10. This is a heavier plane, so it ends the, the bigger engine. Now, in terms of your performance, we mentioned some numbers earlier. In this plane, your typical cruise speed, 10,000 feet, 12,000 feet, you can lean it to about 160 knots and burn 10 gallons of fuel per hour. And in the Sling TSI, I usually fly this between 9,500 and 10,000 feet. And I always plan for 150 knots. So 10 knots less, but I'm burning less fuel. Again, 7.3 is about what I burn in cruise. Now here's another way to look at it. We actually did just a sample test, uh, did a flight plan test with both these airplanes. And in a future video, we're actually gonna fly these things and you know compare them side to side. We did a flight plan from Atlanta, Georgia, all the way to North Carolina. And with that, with those speeds, that would put this airplane, the RV-10 in North Carolina, five minutes earlier than it would put the Sling TSI. But guess what? The Sling TSI would burn two gallons less fuel. Now, you look at those numbers and you're like, it doesn't, it doesn't really, it's not as significant, right? So let's say the RV-10 gets there 20 minutes earlier. Now we may be talking, right? And if this burns, say, five gallons less, you might be talking. So again, depending on who you are and how, how much weight you put on those numbers, those are real life numbers, right? To go somewhere, you would burn two gallons less and you would get there five minutes early with the RV-10. So that's just some, some nice specs for you there. Now let's talk about price for each airplane. To build a Sling TSI or an RV-10, you're pretty much head to head. A fully loaded airplane, if you build one of these by yourself, 
you're looking at about two hundred and fifty to seventy five thousand dollars fully loaded guess what the same thing with a sling tsi you build one of these fully loaded you're looking at about 250 275 now if you went through a build assist like i did just add about a hundred thousand dollars more to that so now you're looking at 300 350 thousand dollars to build either one so they cost roughly the same thing but here's the kicker though the rv10 takes more time to build the average time to build a sling tsi i think the established i mean the the published numbers is about 1600 hours while the rv10 is at least 2000 2500 hours and really the build also depends on who the builder is if you're and again this is assuming you're doing it yourself if you're doing it yourself you may spend up to a thousand more hours building the rv10 than a sling tsi and so now you're thinking of more costs because let's assume that you needed to finish the airplane for business or for whatever reason, then now you got to think about your opportunity costs, right? So again, those are some of the things that you need to consider uh, when building a Sling TSI or RV-10. And the last piece I want to talk about when it comes to pricing and time is parts available, right? So. The RV community is pretty big. I would say that you'd have more resources when it comes to needing help to fix something or getting parts as compared to a Sling TSI. Now that's not to say that there aren't a lot of people already building this airplane, but parts may be more scarce than with the RV because RV is literally the number one experimental uh, aircraft company in the world. So you'd have more resources, more network with the RV-10 than you do the Sling TSI. Now, if you break down the parts though, you would see that some of the parts on the Sling TSI are actually more affordable than the RV-10. For example, if you combine what you would spend on the prop and the engine for the RV-10, as compared to the prop and engine on the Sling, you may be saving 15, 20 grand on the Sling TSI uh, than less than the, the RV-10. So that's something else to keep in mind. And then with the parts also, you think of your lead times because oftentimes you have parts for the Sling TSI has to ship over the ocean from South Africa, whereas this is an American company. And so you have parts that may be readily available. And that also clues into your insurance costs, which we're gonna talk about <laughs> shortly. All right, we're getting close to the end here, guys. But we're still on cost. The next thing I want to cover is how much it costs after you've bought these airplanes. What does it cost to actually own this, the RV-10, as compared to owning the Sling TSI? And this will include your fixed costs and your variable costs. So let's get started. With the Sling TSI, whether, I don't know when this video is going to come out, but I made a video where I basically broke down what my cost is for this airplane and last year it cost roughly $19,000 and some change total to fly the Sling TSI for about 100 hours, maybe a little bit more. With the RV-10, you're looking at four or $5,000 more. So the RV-10 flying 100 to 150, actually 150 hours in the RV-10 costs roughly $24,000. But here's some savings you may find in the RV-10 than a Sling TSI. And that is your insurance. I've made several videos with the Sling where the insurance is a lot more expensive than the RV-10. Now, insurance also will heavily depend on the pilot and how many hours the pilot has, ratings and things like that. But essentially also you have thousands of these airplanes flying. The insurance companies know about them. They know about the parts and all that good stuff, right? So because this airplane is familiar, you get a savings or some savings with the RV-10 compared to the Sling TSI. My insurance cost last year, I mean this year for the Sling TSI, 5,500. Bill's insurance costs, this year on the Harvey 10, 2,600 bucks. So about half, which I'm a little jealous, but those are some of the things that you have to consider. Now, the savings that he's getting in the insurance costs 
I get in the fuel cost because I'm burning less fuel for every hour that I fly compared to burning more fuel for every hour that he flies. So again, you tally everything up with maintenance, fuel, uh, hangar, and your insurance. You're looking at $24,000 a year for the RV-10 and you're looking at about nineteen twenty thousand dollars a year for the tsi now that said i'm expecting my insurance to go down significantly this year so that twenty thousand might drop down to maybe seventeen or eighteen thousand but i will keep you guys posted but those are the numbers that's how much you have to look forward to twenty thousand on the sling tsi twenty four thousand on the RV-10. So guys, one last thing I will mention when it comes to the cost and safety of the RV-10 compared to the Sling TSI is you do have options with either airplane. These are experimental planes. So that means you get to put just about whatever you want. Now there are limitations, but something that you get with the Sling TSI by design is a parachute. So whether you opt in to put one in or not, you already have the cut there for you to put in a parachute for the airplane now the rv10 also you can put a parachute in this airplane or on this airplane but it doesn't come by design but again being an experimental airplane one can be put in and there are several rv10s that are flying around right now with parachutes on board and obviously with that also you have to calculate how much weight it's going to add or take away from your useful load so i would put in about 40 to 50 pounds maybe is what you need to take away if you opt in for a parachute either for the rv10 or the sling tsi and the last thing i'll mention when it comes to safety and pilotage is the fact that you have a fadec system in the sling tsi Okay, I'll walk towards it just to show you once again with the Sling TSI because you have computers doing a lot of tasks for you. You only have one lever. So to fly this airplane, that's all you need. You have your power. That's it. And your prop switch is right there, which you control by just switching to take off, climb, whatever you need. Okay. So that's a safety component. Now, that would depend also on the pilot. You still have to be a safe pilot to fly either airplane. But as a pilot in the Sling TSI, you're, you're doing less tasks. Whereas in the RV-10, the RV-10 has a more conventional engine. So you do have three levers to fly this airplane. So you'd have your throttle, your prop, and your mixture. And you need to know how to use all of it to be able to fly this airplane. And most... I wouldn't say most, all pilots should know how to use, uh, fly a constant speed uh, aircraft, except maybe you're, you're a sports pilot. I think all private pilot trained with a conventional engine. So that shouldn't be a problem, but it is something to consider when it comes to safety and just having more leniency, I guess, uh, in terms of how much work you need to do when you're flying either the RV-10 or the Sling. TSI. Right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. I, I think I've covered just about every basis and cracks for both these airplanes. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm also curious, you know, whether you're interested in the RV-10 or the Sling TSI. If you have any questions, please leave in the description below. Again, I want to say a big thank you to my buddy Bill who allowed me to film his airplane today. And consider this part one of this comparison video because I really wanna do a flight test with both these airplanes because I think we'll find out some things in the Sling and the RV that perhaps we didn't know existed before. But anyway, thank you all so much for spending time with me and I appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Again, my name is Mike and I will catch y'all in the next video. Peace.